we have a virtual meditative walk, which is uh, will be used in human subject studies coming this late summer or early autumn. We'll be doing four to six training sessions for people. Uh, we're using med uh, mindfulness meditation because one of the few, the few things that helps people to gain a sense of control over their pain and self-modulate. So by combining biofeedback and a responsive virtual environment, we're actually able to give people an indication when they're reaching a meditative state and help train them how to use meditation to self-modulate their pain. Diane Grimala has been work working with art and VR since the early 1990s. She's one of the first artists to use virtual reality in her work. Uh, since then, she's been using uh, biofeedback and, and virtual reality and responsive environments to study a connection between embodiment and uh, techno technological apparatuses. Uh, she has an earlier piece called Meditation Chamber. Mm -hmm. It was her first foray into meditation and biofeedback. And this has grown out directly out of, out of that process. So the visual feedback that we're using to tell if a person is in a meditative state or if they're in a meditative state is uh, the l level of fog that they see in an environment. So as they enter a meditative state, the fog uh, begins to clear up. And so we're using virtuals for our 3D environment. And um, the way that it works is that at the beginning, they, they're introduced to the system where they're given uh, basic instructions in terms of how uh, virtual reality system actually works and, um, and then they're connected to biofeedback sensors and the timeline for the walk itself is anywhere from two to five minutes and so we're hoping that uh, the idea is that through multiple runs that they get better at entering uh, a meditative state. They're wearing headphones okay. so we get a certain level of isolation from uh, external noise that's in the conference area, but um, ideally you want to be in a quieter environment <laughs> than this. But the responses have been very positive. Um, well, I think probably because it's in this environment, it was hard for me to, to get into a, a relaxed state. But it was interesting uh, just to kind of, I let the... I let it kind of just go for me, and I just turned around. I couldn't figure out how to go to, to walk, you know. But um, yeah, just I just kind of looked around at my surroundings. And it was quite calming. Like at first, it was a little tense because I'm like starting up. I don't know what's actually going to happen. Um, but as I was kind of slowly going through, it was very calming music, and there's just like you know plants and flowers around. So I kind of stopped and turned around toward those. It was it was pretty soothing. So I managed to like calm down. It actually I guess did what it was supposed to do, and that yeah. it gave me this like meditative state. Right. With the sound combined with the visual feedback, really really helped. Well, it was really um, relaxing and calming. Uh, it was it was nice to be able to uh, it felt interesting to go through a virtual walk. Uh, the visuals were. I'm not sure if they were sometimes a little distracting because they were very sort of pixelated and definitely virtual. Mm -hmm. But um, but to give you that sort of depth of field and the, that movement, it worked pretty good. We're the only research group using virtual reality to uh, study chronic pain. Most of the studies that have been done have been on acute pain, and then there's lots of exposure therapy. Um, things like arachnophobia is very popular and public speaking like that, but no one else is, is really focusing on chronic pain, which is a huge issue. You know, one in five North Americans suffer from chronic pain, uh, so we think that we have something that will provide some help.